if our equation is 3b plus 1, 2b 1 half is equal to 7. Well, technically, the 1 half power is the same thing as what? The square root. So really, this problem isn't any different from the problem yesterday, but I am going to still, I'm going to approach it from the perspective of how we need to approach it today. Okay? <clears throat> so another way to get rid of that 1 half power is to raise both sides to the reciprocal power, okay, which, I mean, yesterday we squared it because it was the square root, okay, it's the same logic, just a slightly different perspective, okay, because when we raise a power to a power, we multiply, well, one half times two is one, so that means that left side right there is just to the first power, and we never write to the first power, okay, we just write it as whatever the base is, 3b plus one, and then we solve it like normal, <clears throat> So B in this case is 16, and as always, you should always check your, check your answer, but usually if there's one solution, then it, it is the correct solution. Usually, <clears throat> that's not an issue. Okay, what if we've got something like example B, where we have negative 18 is equal to 3 minus 3 into the 1 half. Now notice... The placement of the exponent is different in this problem than it was in the last problem. Yes, it's still the one-half power. However, the only thing that power applies to is that variable of n. Okay, it's not applied to that entire expression. So we need to isolate that variable first, and then we can deal with the power. So in this case, we need to subtract 3 from both sides. So negative 21 is equal to negative 3 into the one-half and then divide both sides by negative 3. So 7 is equal to n to the 1 half. <coughs> excuse me, n to the 1 half. Raise both sides to the reciprocal power. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So we have 49 is equal to n. Okay, so that's not really any different from what we were doing yesterday. So let's introduce a power that is different from just the plain old square root. Okay, let's introduce one that's two times three x minus 58, and that is being raised to the four fifths power. We didn't do anything like that yesterday. Okay, now we know that the four fifths is the fifth root of that expression to the fourth. So we can't just square that to get rid of it. Okay, it's a fifth root, it's not a square root. So, just like with the other problems, first of all, that expression with the exponent must be uh, isolated. Okay, We need to start by dividing both sides by 2. So that equals 16. Okay, And I am going to approach this from the perspective of I'm not going to touch my calculator. Okay, I need to be able to do this without my calculator. Um, so to get rid of that 4 fifths power, we're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. That means we're going to raise both sides to the 5 fourths power. Because 4 fifths times 5 fourths is 1. So we've just got 3x minus 58 on the left side. Now, I am going to rewrite that rational exponent now as a radical because I'm trying to solve this for x. So I'm going to rewrite that as the the bottom number is the root, so the fourth root of 16 to the fifth. And remember, it's easier for us to take the root first and then apply the exponent. I'm not trying to raise 16 to the fifth power without a calculator. Okay? I can take the fourth root of 16. I know that that is 2. Okay? So <clears throat> the fourth root of 16 is 2, and then 2 to the fifth power is 32. And now we just have our linear equation. So we add 58 to both sides. Gives us 90. Divide by 3. So our solution here should be 30. And once again, I'll remind you, you can check this. Okay, just go back to the original. You just have to be careful with parentheses. raise it to when you put that power you've got to put that fractional power in parentheses because if you don't it's going to raise it to the fourth and then divide the whole answer by five 
and that's not going to give you 32, even though 30 is the correct answer. Okay? All right. Let's do one more like this together. Negative 27 is equal to the negative of 84 minus m to the 3 fourths. Now, because we've been doing these problems, y'all are in pretty good habits of um, we've got to isolate what, what has that power so we move that negative to the other side. However, later on down the road, a lot of people, they want to slip that negative into the, into the parentheses. They want to distribute that negative. They want to distribute that coefficient, even if it's not just a negative, if it's a 2 or a 3. They want to distribute that into your parentheses, and you cannot do that because the parentheses got the exponent. Okay? Exponents come before multiplication. So you cannot make that negative 84 plus m to the 3 fourths. You've got to move the negative to the other side first. Okay? <clears throat> so when we do that, we get 27 is equal to 84 minus m to the 3 over 4. And I just remembered something. We've got to go back to the other example in a minute. <clears throat> Okay, raise both sides to the reciprocal power, raise it to the four-thirds power. So that is the cube root of 27 to the fourth is equal to 84 minus m. The cube root of 27 is 3. 3 to the fourth is 81. 81. Subtract 84 from both sides. Negative 3 is equal to negative m. Be careful with that. So positive 3 is equal to m. Again, do a little check. Negative parentheses 84 minus 3 raised to the 3 over 4 that gives us negative 27. Now, I always forget this if I don't remind myself beforehand. <clears throat> there is the possibility to have multiple answers. Now, not on this one because the cube root of 27, 3 is the only option. Positive 3 is the only number that you can cube to get positive 27. But if we go back to the previous example, if we go back to C right here, when we put the fourth root of 16, it actually turns out positive 2 is not our only option. Okay, positive 2 is not our only answer there. Yes, positive 2 to the 4th is positive 16, but negative 2 to the 4th is also positive 16. So there is uh, the possibility that we can end up with two answers right here <clears throat> because we should also set this equal to negative 2 to the 5th which is negative 32, and solve that equation as well. It's kind of like the absolute value equations that we've done. Um, in some of the uh, quadratics where we end up with, well, the inequalities, the absolute value inequalities is what I'm thinking about. Okay, so let's check 26 over 3 and make sure that that um, does work as well. That does give us positive 32 as well. Okay? So something that you have to remember with these problems is that when you take an even root, okay, when you take an even root, you have to consider the positive value and the negative value. Okay? You have to consider the positive and the negative value whenever you take an even root in these problems. Okay. Right. Yes, you would have to have both of those answers. Okay. Now notice we didn't have that in D because we took an odd root. We took the cube root of 27. The only possibility for that is positive 3. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27. It does not give us positive 27. Okay. So if you take an even root, you must consider both the positive and the negative values and apply the exponent. Both positive and negative, so you'll have two solutions. 
but as always, you should you should check both of them. Um, we didn't have to worry about that with A and B because we weren't taking roots. We were squaring both sides on A and B. Um, but whenever you take an even root, you have to consider the positive and the negative.